This is Jared, Victor Kilo 3 Bravo Lima, and I'm just going to do a quick overview of the, um, the pan adapter or band scope on the IC7610. You'll see in front of you that it looks quite strange. There's a whole bunch of screen real estate that's disappeared. Why has it done that? Because I've been playing with the monitor scope button. So, if you give it a tap now, it'll show you the small scope. Tap it again, it'll go away. Now you're thinking, what's going on here? Why isn't it going back to the big scope? Well, that's easy. You just push it down and hold, and that's when you get your big scope. Now, once you've got the big scope back, the normal sort of look, you don't want to press that button again. That will, that will get rid of it. What you want to do to play around with it now is this button here, the one on the touch screen. It says EXPD slash set. EXPD being short for expand. If you press that, you'll get a much bigger scope. Now, I don't know whether I need uh, such a big scope on this particular radio, but it's really nice to have the option there. Um, you'll see that my my uh, bar graph has, uh, instead of well, instead of being a bar graph, I've got um, the, the other style of analog meter, um, which I quite like because you get to see the ballistics and uh, get a feel for, um, uh, I guess, uh, you know, the, the noise on the band and the signals and that sort of thing by uh, how it's moving. Now, if you want to know how to set the radio up like that, check out my um, menu overview video. That, that, uh, that covers that setting, and I really like that. I demonstrate that uh, in that video. Um, so let's go back to the normal um, size. That's your normal size. And you have another option, and that's to run dual scopes. Now, at the moment, your second scope's dead. Why is it dead? Because we haven't turned dual watch on. If we press this button here and turn dual watch on, the, the other scope will come to life. Now, then if you want to change the settings of the scope, and only the scope, you can tap on the screen. Now when this is highlighted like that, you, you might be tempted to think that if you turn the VFO, you're going to change the frequency um, of the subband. Now, I actually better turn tracking off for this. So you've got this selected and you think, well, you know, I've touched that, it's going to, the main, the VFO knob's going to, going to change the frequency of the subband. No, it's not. That's one of the most confusing things with these radios, is tapping on the dual scopes. All it does is allow you to change the settings down here of the scope. It doesn't have anything at all to do with the VFO. So if I have this selected with that orange box, all that means is I can go to center fix mode, I can change the span. Center fix mode, um, I'll give you an example. Center means whatever your VFO frequency is, it's centered on it, and you'll see negative 2.5K from that frequency and plus 2.5K from that frequency. Using span, you can make it bigger, make your span much bigger, all the way to a whole megahertz of span. Um, so don't think that's particularly useful. You can see all the strong broadcast stations on um, above 7200 kilohertz over here in VK. Um, so let's go back. I like to leave it on 2.5 or 5K width. Um, sometimes I like to go to 10k width. It's it's really useful for evaluating a strong signal. So let's I'll let's show you what that looks like. Well, here's one down here. Let's go quickly. And oh, I better turn tracking back on. I suppose. Hold down. So there we go. Not quite what I was expecting. What have we got here? Let's have a listen. Ah, I'm still in PSK mode, so let's go back to the standard LSB. Okay, so we've got FT8 and JT65 signals really strong at the moment. As you can see, when you use center, they're um, quite much more easy, it's much easier to visualize them um, than it is when it's uh, on um, fix. Now, fix gives you the whole band, and you can change the edges using the edge button here. They're the basics of the band scope on the IC7610. Um, I like to have dual on if I'm comparing antennas. Uh, one thing you have to do to, and this is another trap, with this orange bar around here, and knowing that that means that all these touch, that, that these, uh, these touch screen buttons are applicable, you might be tempted to think that these ones down the side are applicable too. No, they're not. Changing the antenna here changes the main VFO, even though the, um, the pan adapter or, or band scope of, of the sub receiver is selected. So that's a little bit of a gotcha. If you want to swap between VFOs, 
Don't pretend to tap the screen like this. Instead, you want to use the main sub button and that will automatically um, basically change everything over between the receivers, including the controls. You can see that the, when you press the main and sub, the band, the band you're using lights up, there's the sub, there's the main, and it also moves the focus of the scope controls. So that's how I like to, um, to change the settings if I want to. Um, so yeah, there's a little quick overview. Um, one day I'll, uh, in the future, I'm gonna do a walk through of the settings. There are many. To get to the settings, you hold down the setting and you can see there's three pages of settings. These basically cover how the fast Fourier transformations work. Um, you can do averaging, waveform type, the color of your display, the speed of your display, um, how big your display is when you expand your screen, um, all kinds of things. So I'll give you a quick view of this one. Um, if we go to large for expanded, um, turn dual off and we hit expanded, you can see you've got, uh, well, quite a large screen. If we go back to settings and change it to mid, You know what? I'll be damned. I don't know if um, that really made any difference whatsoever. Let's check out small. Well, there you go. Not really sure what that's changing. That might be a bug we've discovered. I, don't know. I might be doing things wrong. Not sure, but uh, the setting's there anyway. Um, waterfall speed, we'll have a quick look at. As you can see, it runs a lot faster now. Um, that's too fast for my liking. Uh, honestly, the settings in there, they're, they're pretty good from factory. You don't really need to, uh, to fiddle with them too much. The only thing I did was change the waveform type to fill plus line. Um, and that's a very subtle effect, which uh, gives you a little line on top of um, you know, the, white, uh, the white scope up the top. The other thing I did was just uh, turn averaging on to two. Um, averaging makes it look a little bit smoother that's really sort of quite fast and choppy, um, as you can see. Um, you might get epilepsy from that. Well, that's what they used to say in the old days. If you go to two, you can see it's much smoother. It's still fast, but much smoother. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the quick overview of the band scope on the IC7610. If I missed something or you have an explanation as to why changing those settings didn't work, let me know. I actually suspect it's because I've set the meter to this type. Um, when I had the bar graph style, the bar, instead of uh, the analog style meter, it did actually move it up a little bit. So I think that's just a little firmware bug. Hopefully that gets addressed um, in, in updates. And, and there's no reason it shouldn't. This is a beautiful modern radio with very easy updates. Um, and you're paying quite a bit of money for it. Don't, don't, don't tolerate ICOM just saying that's the way it is. If you find little bugs, write them down, let them know. That's what I'm doing. That's part of these videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. This is Jared VK3 Bravo Lima saying 73 and talk to you again soon.